Alright, where we left off, we talked about postulate number 5, which is the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. Uh, we mentioned that the dynamics of a quantum system, how a quantum system involves with time, is regulated by the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. We also mentioned that the equation is not easy to solve. So remember, bear in mind that our objective is like this. Given a quantum system, or given a system at time equals to zero, we want to find how the system evolves with time. So if we want to talk about a particle, we know that a particle is given by the wave a function, so we want to see how the function evolves with time. That comes by solving the time-dependent showing the equation. And today, we are going to look at how we can really move on from there. Okay? The time dependent Schrodinger equation is a partial differential equation, not easy to solve by any standards, but we want to really progress and see how we can move on from that postulate number 5. Okay, So this is how we're going to start. In the position representation, the time dependent Schrodinger equation is given by this equation over here. Okay, I times Plax constant reduced h bar of the time partial derivative of the wave function okay, in terms of x and t okay, is equals to minus uh, h bar squared divided by 2m, the Laplacian operator on that wave function, okay, the state of the system, plus the potential, okay, which is vx and t again, because the potential can evolve with time. That's why it's called the time dependent on the equation, or uh, applied to the wave function, okay, it's given like this over there. Uh, just I uh, want to point out a few things. Remember, this uh, triangle, okay, is the Laplacian operator. And this is really also the potential operator. Now, we have not specified what the potential is. Remember, we are dealing with particles moving in various potentials. I'm going to describe what these potentials are as we move on. And these are operators, right? They are operators. We need to break that out of our mindset. You know, they are not really like quantities they're, or functions. They are operators to be applied onto the wave function. So, this is a very general statement. And it's not easy to solve, okay? It's time dependent. So why is it time dependent? Well, basically because I say again, the potential can change with time. But what we're going to proceed on, okay, from this lesson and subsequent lessons, the potentials that we are dealing with, they are going to be time independent. All right, so we are showing this equation, the potential, okay, which is also inside the Hamiltonian. Remember, the Hamiltonian is the operator onto the wave function. There can be time dependent potentials and time independent potentials. So, our lesson from today and henceforth is going to look at the time independent potentials. Now, you will find, okay, that, you know, when we move on to the time independent potentials, really, the calculations go into another, another section, okay? They are like the time dependent potentials because time dependent potentials are very difficult to solve. So, remember, we're going to time independent potentials. So, we consider the time independent potential v uh, xt. Vxt is not equal to vx, the potential just in terms of x. So the potential does not change in time. You got we got the particle, the particle is gonna move, right? And the potential is gonna be time independent. It's not gonna evolve with time. So when we do that, okay, this now becomes Vx, okay, it's just Vx. So the potential operator is just going to be Vx. This is going to stay the same because we are going to look at the, the evolution of the wave function. That's why there's still the time factor there, okay? And we want to try to now see what we can do with this time dependent showing the equation. Now, if we do that, okay, we are left with this partial differential equation. The partial differential equation theory, theory tells us that we can propose a solution. And that is, we can um, write as separate solutions and multiply them together the wave function in terms of x and t is equals to a wave function, okay, which is uh, small phi, just in terms of x multiplied by a function in terms of t. Because this allows us, okay, when we put in the time independent potential inside here, this would give us a kind of a separable partial differential equation, okay? So really, we can just propose a solution. The theory tells us that we can propose a solution, um, a function just in terms of x, which we call as phi, multiplied by a function in terms of t. So today, we're going to do some mathematics and see what we get. So, what we want to do is that we want to substitute this equation over here, right? Uh, sorry, this expression over here into what we have over here, the time uh, dependent showing the equation, which is over here, over here like that. Okay, when we do that, this, okay, so we take partial t, we're going to uh, partial, differentiate, partial differentiate in terms of t, this uh, wave function over here, now this is x, so really this, we can bring this out and we just have to partial differentiate this function t in terms of t over here, we have done so like this, okay, I hope you can see. Uh, partial differentiate this in terms of t, this is in terms of x, bring that out, we just have to partial differentiate uh, the function f in terms of t with respect to t, and that's why it becomes the, the derivative. Okay, it equals 2, and we just uh, plainly substitute this one over here, over here like that. We cannot do anything yet. 
So this is what we have, okay? Now this is what we have right now after substituting the proposed solution. Now we're gonna divide through by phi x multiplied by um, f, uh, function f in terms of t. We're gonna divide this throughout by that, okay? And you'll see why we get that because this action is gonna give us our separable, uh, as we're able to separate the partial differential equation. Now, time to test our mathematics and what we know about operators. Okay, now I'm going to do the left hand side, right? So basically, what we're going to do is that when we divide this by this, okay, the phi cancels out and the function f in terms of t goes to the bottom. So this one is set. Now, what about the right hand side? Okay, now this is very careful because this is really the start of the mathematics um, manipulation of terms that we have to deal with when we, when we come to quantum mechanics. Can we simply cancel this out? Okay, can you see that? Can we simply cancel this out? Okay, now if we do that, it will be a remarkable mistake because like I say again, this object over here and these objects over here are operators. They are not like expressions that when we multiply, we, we multiply them together. No, they are operators. They operate onto what is given over here like this. So this is an operator onto this function over here. Okay, now so we cannot just cancel them out. They are operators. This is this, okay. Um, does not equal to this, if this statement makes any sense, you know, or maybe a constant multiplied by this. We cannot cancel them out. They are operators. So what happens is that when we operate this, okay, what do we know about the Laplacian operator? The Laplacian operator is going to be the second derivative in terms of the coordinate axis. So this is going to be partial uh, 2 uh, dx2 plus partial 2 dy2 and plus partial 2 d, uh, dz2, okay, the coordinate axis. And what we know is that all these are in terms of really the coordinates. Now, when we are dealing with one dimension, okay, we cancel these two out. So really, it's just d, uh, d2, d2x. So if I differentiate this in terms of x, I can really extract the, the ft outside, you see? I can bring the ft outside the operator. This is fine. Same thing for the potential. The potential only operates on the function that's in terms of x. In this case, it's phi. So I can bring this thing out also. Right? Now, if I bring these two things out, okay, and I will divide by f, okay, if I divide by f, they cancel, and this, when I divide the remaining term right hand side in terms of phi, in terms of x, I have to write it like that, okay? So you see, I'm dividing this out. The ft cancels, the function f in terms of t cancels, but I'm left with the phi in terms of x, and I'm gonna leave this as it is. So as you can see, they still operate on what they're supposed to operate on, right? So this is now what we have. All right. Now, what do we notice about this equation over here? The left-hand side is an equation in terms of t, expression in terms of t, okay, t, 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 and the right-hand side is an expression in terms of x, and both of them are equal. So, this would equal to a constant, okay, and we label that constant E, and this has the units of energy. Okay, why is that so? Postulate number two, remember, for every operator, there's an associated observable. What is the operator that we started out with? We started out with the Hamiltonian. Hamiltonian is written as this over here. But the Hamiltonian, when we apply that to the wave function, to the state of the system, it will give us the energy. So that's why this is equal to constant, uh, the constant energy, units in terms of energy. So what we want to do is now we want to solve this. All right, uh, separate the solutions and solve them together. So we're gonna pair this up with the constant E, solve that, and later pair this up with the constant E and solve that. So going back to the equation that we have, now we just wanna look at this part. Okay, and very quickly going through. Now I bring the phi x over, I will rearrange, bring this phi out. Okay, what I get is this equation over here, and this is what we call the time independence showing the equation, and this is the equation that we're gonna pick up from. Solving the time independence showing the equation. Now, why can we solve it so easily? Because we have eliminated t from the equation. All right, now quantum mechanics, when we are dealing with the time independent potentials, the beauty of it is that we are left with solving the time independent showing the equation. Why is that so? Because, Remember, we have already solved the function f in terms of t, right? So we are given the state, okay, which was previously in terms of x and t, which it still is. But now, all we have left with is that we got solved the complex function, the complex wave function, and then just multiply that by e to the power of minus i e t divided by h bar. Okay, now there's a special name for this. This is called the time evolution operator. Okay, so essentially what we have is that 
we have solved the showing the equation okay for a time independent potential the solution that we got is this solution over here okay capital phi okay is equals to phi x um, multiplied by e uh, to the power of i minus i e uh, t divided by h bar this one is always stays as it is and we get the complex wave function by solving the time independent showing the equation now maybe you can see it as this right we have if we can solve the time independent showing the equation which is easier to solve because it's just an equation in terms of x okay we have to just simply apply the time evolution operator and when we do that we have solved okay the states of the quantum system for all times